Hello, Dr. Grafalls here. Uh, congratulations on your first discussion post. Uh, this video is here to review some of the ideas in McKittrick's chapter and Palsy's film that we'll build on as we continue our course. But first, I want to talk about uh, our next discussion. Right, so first things first, uh, I do need you to put titles for your posts, right, for your initial posts. Titles are important to let your peers know your specific angle you're going to take in your posts, right, and we all should develop a specific angle. This will help us for our first essay. Also, uh, most of you did this, but I want you to include citations of each of the texts that you talk about. Specifically, I also want you to include the page numbers of the passages that you cite. Right. So this is uh, very important to show your engagement with the text by citing the text uh, in a proper way. And finally, uh, on discussion. Uh, so when you write, keep in mind your your audience. Uh, what I mean by this is that it seemed that some of you were writing a synopsis of the film, like your, your own general synopsis of the film. But uh, note that uh, everyone who reads your response has has already seen the film or, or read the text. So instead of giving a synopsis, you want to uh, try to go deeper into the text by developing a, a specific angle of approach uh, for the text, right? This way we can all together uh, move deeper into our understanding of, of the text. So now let me review some concepts in McKitchick's chapter. So you'll want to put the subtitles on uh, because I cite uh, McKittrick's chapter and you might want to write down uh, some of the quotes and, and page numbers. So when McKittrick defines black geography, sh she defines it as subaltern or alternative geographic patterns that work alongside and beyond traditional geographies and a site, a terrain of struggle, end of quote. So now, when you think about geography, uh, you might be thinking about something that appears objective, right? something that you can see represented in a classroom or, or on Google online. But when McKittrick develops the idea of black geographies, she is thinking about uh, something that's more uh, subjective. Right? She's thinking about subjective ways of engaging uh, space, specifically uh, spaces of uh, oppression. So uh, a helpful way to uh, break this down is to look at Mitch McKittrick's distinction between transparent uh, space, transparent space, and the space of the subject. McKittrick states that, quote, the linkages between transparent space and the space of the subject begin to clarify the ways in which black geographies can be conceptualized. While the power of transparent space works to hierarchically position individuals, communities, regions, and nations, it is also contestable. The subject interprets and ruptures the knowability of our surroundings." End of quote. McKittrick's claim is that geographies have been traditionally constructed to dispossess black subjects. She says, quote, traditional geographies did and arguably still do we require black displacement, black placelessness, black labor, 
and a black population that submissively stays, quote unquote, in place. Enforcing black placelessness captivity was central to processes of enslavement and the physical geographies of the slave system, end of quote. So if the given or taken for granted form of space has been constructed to dispossess black subjects, black geographies are ways that write back against these alienating spaces. The Kitcher states, quote, black geographies are located within and outside the boundaries of traditional spaces and places. They expose the limitations of transparent space through black social particularities and knowledges. They locate and speak back to the geographies of modernity, transatlantic slavery, and colonialism, end of quote. Now, in giving concrete examples of thinkers who imagine black geographies, she turns to creative writers, right? writers of fiction, like Octavia Butler, Edouard Glissant, and Toni Morrison, writers who signal, quote, a different sense of place, one which does not exactly duplicate the traditional features of geographic ownership that we value so much, end of quote. In your discussion, many of you pointed uh, to Octavia Butler's novel Kindred about a black woman who was forced to travel back and forth in time uh, from 1976 Los Angeles to pre-Civil War Maryland. McKittrick is implying that this time-traveling consciousness replicates in a way, the way we should engage with black geographies. Finally, with uh, Lahu Kasneg or Sugarcane Alley, we saw how Medusa's stories to Jose helped him gain a sense of awareness of the small world of the plantation system. Jose is able to witness a history of diaspora that resists and goes against the transparent space uh, of the plantation. So I don't want to give a long lecture about the film because many of you wrote so wonderfully about it, but I do want to place emphasis on those last lines from the film when Jose states, quote, Martin has gone to Mr. Medu's Africa. Tomorrow, I'll return to Fort de France, and I'll take with me my Black Shack Alley. Patricia Catry, right, in the discussion, puts it really nicely in her post. Uh, so here we see how Jose's memory becomes the space of Black geography, right? Memory itself, memory is something subjective uh, becomes this this new space of new space of resistance so jose is now a subject who can take the space of the black shack alley with him to fort de france uh, fort de france the capital of martinique uh, represents the dominant space of education and martinique and knowledge so we see jose on his way to become an intellectual that can give voice to the subaltern of Martinique, those people who are voiceless uh, and who can't speak for these types of spaces. Uh, so finally, uh, we'll be reading Aimé Césaire's Notebook of a Return to the Native Land. And when you read it, I want you to make connections to McKitchick's chapter and her idea of black geographies. Remember that uh, you'll be writing about this text uh, very soon, so I want you to use discussion as a sort of workshop space uh, to develop your ideas for your first essay, to develop that specific angle of approach that you'll develop.
So thank you so much, and I'm looking forward to our second week of discussion. And uh, in my next video, I'll give some ideas to help frame uh, Cesare's text. So thank you very much.